here are the psilocybe pelliculosa or the striate psilocybe. Um, one way you can tell this mushroom is it's gonna have a, a gelatinous pellicle that peels apart that clear slimy layer. Mushroom Wonderland. Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. And if you're new to this channel, what we talk about here is wild mushrooms mainly. Everything mushrooms really. So my name is Aaron Hilliard. I'm the creator of Mushroom Wonderland, vice president of the local mycological society. Just been a mushroom geek my whole life. So I go on walks out here into the beautiful conifer forest with my dog Gunner. And uh, we're here in Western Washington. We just go out, identify what kind of mushrooms are growing. It's been a minute since I did an update video. So here we are, middle of December in Western Washington, but heading out today, out into the woods. The snow actually just melted. We had a snowfall last week here in Western Washington, which was pretty unusual. Uh, it doesn't do that too often, but it's, it seems like it's actually been snowing more the last few years, but either way, there's still mushrooms growing out here. So let's go out into the woods and I'll talk about them a little bit. And so come with me into Mushroom Wonderland. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Let's go see what's growing. And there's this big log here and uh, there's some cool stuff going on right here see these two different mushrooms growing right next to each other both of them eating the inside of this log and these are the spore dispersal units the sexual reproductive organs that we know as fruiting bodies so they're they're both kind of related this one is known as the fomitopsis ocracia so um, a little bit different from the red belted conch this one is a little bit more hoof shaped it doesn't really have the belt on it and it's not very red colored but this one, Pycnoporellus fulgens, uh, beautiful, kind of a fuzzy polypore, very bright orange. So these ones grow on conifers here in Washington, brown rot decayer. So very closely related, but very different morphology. So there's your Pycnoporellus fulgens. Very, very vibrant. Definitely not chicken of the woods. This thing is tough and they actually, they get pretty crumbly and dry. And then right here is your Fomitopsis ocracia. This one's like a woody conch. This one, much more fragile. It would easily break off of this log. But they're both in here eating the white cellulose inside of the wood. Look at, there's even little mycenoid mushrooms, little mycenas growing here out of the bark. Um, right here, another Pycnoporellus. Right here, this is a, uh, one of the witch's butters. This is the orange jelly fungus that grows here on conifer trees. The uh, Dacromyces chrysospermus. I was almost having a brain fart there. Here, red belted conch. You see that red color? And then the belt right there, Fomitopsis ocracia. So these all used to be lumped in the same thing. And they called them all Fomitopsis panicola. But they're, uh, but they're, but they're different. So this, this log's got quite a bit of diversity going on here. Over there, looks like a Ganoderma of some sort. Maybe the Aplanatum or the Brownie Eye that's growing here on a conifer log. Probably Aplanatum. Yep, growing in these pancake stack formations. Ganoderma Aplanatum or the artist conch. Maybe it looks a little bit like a Garricon to you, but it's not. It's an artist conch. Gunner's very impatient today. So, but it's fun to come across logs like this in the woods. And there's so much fungal life going on. And a huge Fomitopsis down in there. Very cool. So, there you go. There's like four or five mushrooms all in one. The Pycnoporellus, the Fomitopsis mountier, Fomitopsis ocracia, Mycena. Ganoderma and the uh, Dacromyces. So <laughs> nice one. Let's keep going, bud. Come on. Okay. 
here. More foamy topses. These ones look different than the Mountier or the Ocracia. So they can come in, whoa, like a lot of different forms, but uh, but you know, they're all in the foamy top. CACA, I believe it's the family uh, of these these mushrooms. Here's some uh, wild rubber bands laying in the woods. These are great for snaring wildlife, little squirrels and things like that. You know, you could definitely kill them. You wouldn't even have to be here to kill them. There's a little foil. So what happens is out here, um, people pick this brush. There's a agriculture, you know, agricultural brush out here that they pick for like floral arrangements and the people leave all their rubber bands and their trash and stuff like that out here in the woods. So that's kind of lame. Um, so when I see stuff like this, I just pick it up. So, yep. Let's put it in our pocket and keep going. One of these old stumps right down here. I see uh, an interesting looking mushroom right here. Let me flip this camera and show you a couple of the mushrooms we have growing right here. All right, we look down next to this conifer stump and we see this big kind of leaf shaped mushroom, bizarre. And it's, uh, look at all that water. So now looking at this a little closer, I think what we have is the uh, velvet footed pax or the Tapanilla atrotomentosa. Uh, it's just old and been washed out. So this one's a dying mushroom and it was probably been growing here for a couple of months. So um, it'll have like velvet here on the bottom of the foot when it's younger. But the Tapanilla atrotomentosa they use this to dye fabric with. You boil it with uh, wool or silk, and the dyes in the mushroom will actually go into the fabric. So, but not a good edible. And then right down here, growing amongst all these like downed logs, I'm seeing a ton of mushrooms growing like this. So let me pluck this and flip it over. Here we go. These guys. Now you might say sulfur tuft. I know what that one is, sulfur tuft. But look in the gills here. It doesn't have that fluorescent yellow color. And so these ones have been super common this year. This is Hyphaloma capnoides, or the uh, the smoky gill. So this is actually a decent edible mushroom. It's got um, kind of these smoky gray colored gills when the spores mature, rather than the, the bright fluorescent yellow and a really dark spore of the Hyphaloma fasciculari. It's close relative, but the but the Hyphaloma fasciculari, the sulfur tuft is poisonous, whereas these ones are edible. Um, here's some kind of little polypores growing here too, but look at that, you can really see the smoky color. So all of these are actually good edibles um, and they're growing all over around here, this huge flush of Hyphaloma capnoides or the smoky gill, or I've heard them called the conifer tuft. And so I could pick a bunch of these and they'd be decent edibles. Look at that. Some of them get pretty big. Look at that. Big, good example. Hyphaloma capnoides. So they're a little bit more orange typically than your sulfur tuft. The sulfur tuft is usually more yellow. And then these, the gills are very obviously gray rather than fluorescent yellow. They still do fluoresce a little bit under UV light. But, um... So yeah, if you know your mushrooms, you know, you might look at these and be like, sulfur tufts, they're not, they're conifer tufts. So this one a decent edible, but you know, if you don't know what you're doing, probably one to avoid, but can you see the difference in those gills? Anyways, I'm finding this to be a huge year for these. Uh, beautiful, beautiful mushroom, the Hyphaloma capnoides. And then look what I just see right here on the ground, going off of the stick. Oh, how beautiful. There's a kind of a log right here and this big fruiting of these fan-shaped mushrooms. They sure look like cartoon turkey tails, don't they? So that's what they are. These are turkey tails, Trimedes versicolor. See the pores underneath there? It's got a pore surface underneath. Um, the false turkey tail or sterium that grows on wood like this does not have this pore surface, these little tiny holes underneath the bottom of it. So. This is actually a really pretty flush of turkey tail right here. Probably worth taking a photo of and uploading on iNaturalist. Oh uh, yeah, look at this end of the stick. Beautiful. So yeah, it looks like a drawing of a, of a turkey tail. 
and uh, really highly medicinal probably the most studied mushroom in the world for medicinal use Tremedes versicolor very cool so there you go Tremedes versicolor or the turkey tail mushroom and then right as I stand up and take a couple of steps look right here there's this purpley looking mushroom you flip that over. These have been rare this year, which is crazy because they're usually super duper common. These ones are called uh, in the genus Rusula. So they have a strange texture and you can always tell when you break the stem, it snaps. Whereas a lot of mushrooms will just kind of string off. This one's got this purpley cap and I'm betting that this one's mild. I've found enough of these around here to know. This is what we call the shrimp mushroom or uh, Rusula zerampolina. And it grows here in the autumn, and they're still growing in December. This one's young and small. They can get really, really big. But one way to test the genus Rusula is you can take a little nibble off the edge of the cap. And if it gets spicy in your mouth, you want to leave it behind. And if it's mild, it's a good one to eat. So the genus Rusula, typically very common in Western Washington, but this year, they just haven't came up too much. And these are mycorrhizal mushrooms. So they're growing in association off the roots of some of these Douglas firs around here and uh, like the hyphaloma and the uh, tapanilla and the turkey tail are all saprobes, so they don't need a tree to grow with, but uh, but beautiful uh, shrimp rustler. So there you go. I'm not gonna take it with me today, so. There it goes, leaving it in the woods. Here's a whole bunch more of the capnoides. So you know what, I am gonna collect some for the table. And uh, they're just so pretty. Such a nice fruiting of them that, uh, yeah, I'm gonna collect some of these and take them home to cook and eat. See, I'm gonna load this little tackle box that I have up. I don't want them too old or where they're full of bugs and stuff. Um, there's actually quite enough growing out here that I can be pretty picky about the ones that I want. Look over here, this is where one cap was growing on top of the other. Really dark spore print, that's spores. This is that dark purple brown spore print that, but look at that, you see that gray color? Definitely different, so. I'm gonna collect only the choicest of specimens and I don't have my tripod with me today, so I'm not gonna give you the ASMR of picking all of these, but uh, beautiful. Uh-oh, look at that. Look at that difference. So there are some, look at the Hyphaloma fasciculari next to the Hyphaloma capnoides. Whoa. So they're growing right next to each other. That's an awesome example. Look at that. So almost picked a couple of the poisonous ones to put in with my edibles. So do not make that mistake. Or you're going to end up with a bad bellyache. Hyphaloma, oops, Hyphaloma capnoides, Hyphaloma fasciculari. How about that? See, this is where they had a bunch of logging equipment come through, just tearing the place up. But you can find a lot of mushrooms in areas like this because of all the dead wood, good for the sap probes. And then it's, you know, bordered with big conifer forest, which has a lot of mycorrhizal mushrooms. So I'm kind of right in the, oh, look at that, bunch of smoky gills. Beautiful. Look how they grow in a cluster like that. All slimy. And boy, it is the year for them. See that? It's not fluorescent colored. They're like white, but boy, beautiful year for the smoky gill. But yeah, this kind of a uh, habitat, Although I find myself sometimes being annoyed by the seeming destruction of the forest. When you learn a little bit more about forestry, you can start to understand how, you know, practice in the past with lack of knowledge has led to us having to do things like this to create more diversity. So this will be good in the long run, but right now it can be kind of ugly when the ground is all torn up. But uh, I'm joining the stewardship for this particular county park. And we're going to be planting a bunch of trees. Looks like this area already, look at there's western red cedar somebody planted here. So it's to create more diversity 
out here. Um, rather than just being Douglas fir, uh, there's going to be a lot more trees, a lot more diversity, and in turn, there'll be a lot more fungal diversity. So it's a good thing. And you can actually find a ton of different mushrooms out here right now. So I do like that. All right, so I just came across one that I know is gonna interest a lot of you. Look at this, all these LBMs. See these little brown mushrooms growing here? There's quite a few. Ooh, look at that one right there next to the stick. You see the slight kind of discoloration on the cap right there? So these mushrooms are what is known that's Psilocybe Polliculosa. Or the striate Psilocybe. These are our own woodland magic mushrooms that grow here in western Washington. Psilocybe Polliculosa. And one way you can tell is often right down here at the stem base is going to be bluing. Um, and sometimes it takes just a little damaging to really make it turn blue. But they like to grow in spots like this. You can see right there. And they're very slimy caramel colored caps. And so they're a pretty indistinct little brown mushroom. Let me show you one of the main indicators. One of the main things that are, that's really gonna let you know this is the genus Psilocybe. So not only does it, they, uh, they get a little bluing on them, but when you peel this cap open, it has what's called a remo removable gelatinous pellicle. So watch this. See that slimy membranous layer? That's the pellicle. Look at that. So this is your Psilocybe polliculosa. A fairly mild hallucinogenic mushroom. Look at that. You don't see that on Gallerina or on any other of the little brown mushrooms that are gonna be growing around here except for psilocybe. And so there's quite a few of them. They love little clear cut areas. They love little spots where, where uh, new mulch has kind of been laid down, wood chips and whatnot. And so they're pretty, pretty caramel colored to almost yellowy color. They have this little flocco stem on them. Looks like little hairs or something. And uh, often at the base of the foot of these particular mushrooms, you'll see a little bit of bluing also around the edge of the cap, but really look for that removable gelatinous pellicle. And these are um, said to be one of the few actually native magic mushrooms here that grow in Washington state. So beautiful, Psilocybe pelliculosa. Oh, a couple of nice ones right there. Always fun to find. Sometimes you can find these growing. Hundreds of thousands of these mushrooms will be growing in clear-cut areas. And there's a pretty nice little fruiting right here. Oh, quite a few more over here. Oh, they continue into the sticks and the wood. Oh my gosh. And look, they just keep going and going and going. Look at all of these. So, super, super common out here in the forest. You just really have to kind of look close. And uh, the striate psilocybe, some people call it, because it has striation. See those lines on the edge of the cap? So, pretty. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that for you one more time just because it's so illustrative of the genus psilocybe. Your, your removable gelatinous pellicle. This one is not holding, here it is. Not holding as strong as the other one, but telling you these things run in big troops so sorry about the shoddy camera work today but uh came into a huge patch Psilocybe polliculosa you could pick a whole bunch of those you know and they'll do the trick so how cool and look at this growing right amongst these Psilocybes is what do we got here golden chanterelles Pacific Golden Chanterelles, Psilocybe Pelliculosa growing right next to each other. You will only see that here on Mushroom Wonderland. <laughs> How cool is that? So, beautiful. I'm gonna take some photos of these 
pelliculosa and upload them on to iNaturalist and yeah, there's your habitat. Look at this flush of them. They love whatever was happening right here. Nice flush of these. So they really truly are everywhere right now. Everywhere. I mean, this isn't a special spot. There's probably areas near wherever you are that they've done some kind of logging like this. I'm telling you what, these mushrooms are everywhere. It's always kind of exciting. Right here on this conifer log, we have these little mycenas. Wow, tough stems. They have white, white spores, so there's hundreds of mycenas here in the Northwest. I'm not even gonna try to assign these species name off the top of my head. But uh, just know these are a, a lot of mycenoid mushrooms, so they're, they're busy eating the inside of this log here. And uh, very pretty. Some of them will actually kind of bleed when you break the cap. These aren't those ones, but uh, right behind it, growing here, uh, is this kind of yellowish looking mushroom, very scaly looking stem. This one, uh, pretty ambiguous looking mushroom. <laughs> That's how it gets the name, Stropharia ambigua. And when it grows up, it's gonna have all these like little tattered uh, pieces dangling off the edge of the cap. But right now it's just kind of kind of a benign looking yellowish mushroom with the white scaly stipe. And it's in the uh, Stropharia, so related to wine caps. And you could eat this one, but uh, not really desired. They're popping up everywhere right now in the identification forums. I'm seeing a lot of people asking about those. The questionable Stropharia, for the ambiguous Stropharia, Stropharia ambigua. Fun name. I just think Stro Stropharia is one of the prettiest genus names. Um, I have three daughters, but if I have a fourth one, I'm going to name her Stropharia. Maybe. Right here on this stick, growing amongst this invasive holly, we have these big blobs of yellow jelly oh. there you go for all you weirdos out there <laughs> this is a tremella mesenterica because it's growing in association with the sterium false turkey tail so this actually parasitizes the mycelium of the sterium so growing on hardwood in association with sterium and we're gonna have the witch's butter known as tremella and then the other one that dacromyces growing on conifer and you can call that witch's butter too because these are common names and common names can you know kind of be interchanged that way so don't be tripping if people are saying that's not witch's butter you know uh the common name doesn't really matter and look at here oh pretty look at this little beautiful little brown guy growing here it's got these like concentric rings coming from the out inside out and underneath poor poor surface strange this one's a jana porous so another dying fabric dying mushroom pretty little guy growing out here could look like the tapanilla but instead of gills under there it's actually got pores which this one's weird because the pores are actually kind of separated looking a bit like gills but that's jana porous hiertus over here more on this log so a lot of this stuff growing out here this year. It's a good year for witch's butter. We look right here along the side of the trail. Look at this. These are young Amanita buttons. Look how red it is in the center there and how yellow the the warts are. This is Amanita muscaria variety flavi vulvata and the flav actually means yellow on the 
vulva down here but these ones are so yellow everywhere it might have something to do with how wet they've been i found these buttons a while ago and they're just starting to you know actually look like mushrooms so man they got stunted by the freezing weather and the snow and stuff but uh but Jamanita muscaria, Flabby vulvata, you could pick these and probably still arrive, you know, derive the uh, the psychoactive effects out of them. But but uh, I'm gonna leave them there. So. Yeah. Dang. So how cool is that? I uh, you just never know. You know, I set out today, just like hey, let's go for a walk in the woods. I needed to get out of the house. Gunner was going a little stir crazy. So thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland. Hit subscribe. See you on the next episode. Much love. Peace out. Love ya. Bye.